folks. So welcome, Gillian and uh, Thank you. And you can ask Wendy about how to eat an elephant when we finish this. But we thought that that was an interesting title. talk to you very briefly about Office 365, which we've implemented in the Department of Customer Service over the last three or so years. Many people say, oh, it's cloud, it's 365, it's something that IT just did to us. Well, I thought I'd tell you about our experience where I was able to be the one who was guiding it and um, what we were trying to do. And then Wendy's going to talk to you about the next step, because that's, to me, the really exciting part. So in 2016, 2017, we had multiple email systems here, and we just really wanted to be able to have one email system, not rocket science. <laughs> so we, put, we decided that we'd go for Office 365 in the cloud, um, but being a government department with a lot of legacy systems, every time we tried to do anything, something broke. So it took us a long time, and we did it very carefully. So one of the things that I highlight here is that it's hard work, even though it may sound like it's a really simple thing to do. When you migrate email systems, and I know there are people in this room who've done it very recently, you have to make sure that little things like the rooms, room bookings, all go across with the rooms, or else people get very, very cranky. It was a big piece of work, but it was largely transparent at the back end. But what it did was really flip us over into being into the cloud and into a whole new um, way of working. So Wendy's going to talk about the records management implications. And one of the big things is that this was being done with records in the So in 2018, we actually told people what we'd done. And we said, guess what? You can now do these things. We had one place where everybody was able to share information. And when you've got people in any number of offices and across the whole state, that's actually a big thing. Um, the secretary just wanted to be able to send out a bulletin and know that he would get every single person in the organisation. Doesn't sound too hard? Boy, let me tell you. Um, it really replaced all those mailing groups in this. So again, we're still talking about bringing the old technology forward and being able to actually do the thing. So our problem statement was really just, I want to be able to contact everybody in one place. And we also migrated lots of intranets. Now, if the latest MOGs haven't got you yet, you'll have discovered that this is a good way of bringing out all your old technology. And that's what we were doing for a couple of years. Then we got to do the fun, fun bit. We launched Teams and Yammer. And we, made, we had what we call better ways of working. So helping people to see what's there. Um, we wanted to make this technology work for people. So again, we didn't just say, well, here you go. Use it and I hope it works. We went around and we did what we called assisted adoption, where we actually went to talk to the leaders, because if you don't engage the leaders, then um, you really are um, on a hard sell. We engaged the leaders and said, what, what are your problems with information? How can we help you store it? And this is where it, our records thinking was coming more and more to the fore. And we were thinking about, well, what are your records? Where are you storing them? Are you really still storing them in that email um, account that you're migrating from system to system? Maybe there's a better way of doing things. Um, and we made it a platform. Um, so now comes the really groovy part, because all the way along, as I said, we were thinking records, 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 records. What are we going to do, records, records? Yeah, let's just put in a connector between SharePoint and Teams. Yeah, that'll work really well, and that'll just capture everything. Or you could have a Wendy Collis. Hi, I'm Wendy Collis. Um, so... We talked a little bit about how we released Office 365 and it was the beast that it is, um, but we didn't accept the limitations that it came with. And so we began by running a proof of concept. But I'm going to give you a bit of background to our thinking. I like to think of records as occurring in three phases. The simple phase, everybody worked on the same system and that system was paper. And we were able to collate it, staple it, file it, put it into cupboards. Totally awesome. And completely horrible. 
because working in digital makes things so much more efficient. So we came to the second phase, and that second phase was BEDR and S. And I'm old enough, been in this industry long enough to go to my first conference where they went, EDRMS, it stands for Electronic Document and Records Management System. And then they went on and said, single source of truth. Unfortunately, this was a lie. And I spent 10 years peddling this lie. Because, of course, it was totally not the single source of truth. We had business systems, we had share drives, we had email, we had increasing numbers of options of people who simply needed to wave a credit card in the air and get their dreams fulfilled. And I believe that we are moving into the third age. And that third age is about connection and it's about search. And so while I'm going to be talking about a small proof of concept, about a small part of a smallish system, it actually has a much broader framework. This is a little bit like my organisation. It doesn't make a whole bunch of sense right now. What we had was a lot of people using a lot of business systems and either the people were asked to put information into Trim or the second phase, the, biz, the business systems themselves were putting information into Trim. What happened was this. Re, please replace the word Trim with any other EDRMS system you may choose to have. But in our case, it was Trims. You can see the multiple there. Trim was now considered the magic bucket. And if you connected to the magic bucket, suddenly your records were compliant. It was fantastic. But of course, that too was also a lie. The thing that you'll also note is that people, systems, trims, not very well aligned. What we want to see is the processes at the head. The processes drive what we do. And people can use their business systems. We manage the records within those business systems. And if we can't, we connect them to appropriate business systems. And we use things like micro connectors to be able to control the information. And you can see my little ring lock trim. That's for legacy and stubborn people. Please note, I have the icon record 365. I, I am systems agnostic. I'm loyal to whoever pays me. Um, it's just that we have acquired uh, Records 365, but it's not the only product on the market. I'm not sporking them. They'll pay me later. So initially, we only had two options. One, people put, people put information into systems. The second, the, the system itself put inf information into trim. What we now have, when you look at records management, and what we refer to as records management in place, is we have four options. We begin with that business system, and we do a business system assessment. And that is preferably done before the system is purchased. And so we make it part of the requirements. It can also be done post-purchase of that system, makes it slightly more awkward, have more awkward conversations, but ultimately can be quite fulfilling. And from here we can go. The system is assessed as record compliant. Ripper, don't need to do anything more. They're the unicorns. We can modify the system so it can achieve records compliance, and we can do that in a number of ways. Hard coding, not my favourite, but possible. We can migrate into a compliance system. Again, not so awesome. Okay-ish. The fourth one is to use a connector to manage the information from which it came. And that connector allows us to control that information in an invisible way. Okay? It can be a little complex and it's a developing technology, but I believe that it is one that we can use, particularly as we're moving into much more cloud-based systems, much better APIs, that we're able to go, I understand this information is here, and because I understand the information is here, I also understand that it has this particular value and we need to manage it in this particular way. And so that is the direction that we're coming from. So what has this got to do with Office 365? Our intention was not to connect it to another EDRMS system because many people have gone down that route, few people are satisfied, and things are evolving so rapidly that having those connections can be quite fraught. Office 365 comes with its own little characteristic called 
evergreen. Evergreen means that at any point in time, Microsoft can say, you got this now, man. And that can affect entirely what you're doing. So I don't want to go too hard on the Microsoft bashing. They, they pay my wage and my mortgage. Um, but I do want to acknowledge that Office 365 also has some inbuilt capabilities for records management. It understands the concept of retention. It understands the concept of preservation. It allows you to do some forms of granular uh, retention on sites, libraries, um, <laughs> etc. Exchange content and in OneDrive. However, the caveat of that is that it isn't records management. It's just a way of holding information, making copies of that information for a particular purpose. It's very labour intensive. It's based on a US model. If you go down the native Office 365 route for managing your records, God have mercy on your soul. So we had a vision. And our vision was, and our vision is for all of our records, is that people go about their business in everyday life and are not affected by records management. So in this instance, we wanted to manage information in Office 365 in a compliant way, but there's not imposed an administrative burden onto the end users. So because of this, we acknowledge that Office 365 is being used not just as a filing system, not just as a dumping ground for documents, but it is a platform. It is what we're going to be encouraging our staff to be using when they are developing information management systems. There has been a lack of compliance, I would say, when people want to be able to need to move things into Trim and be using Trim. And that is because people have seen through the live at EDRMS where we've been going, Here's the carrot, it's kind of cool and you know, versioning. And here's the stick compliance. So you've got to do it. And people are like, yeah, I'd rather do the easy thing. So there's a horse training technique, which is called make the good thing easy and the hard thing bad. And that's what we're trying to do, make the good thing easy. One can manually move documents from SharePoint to Teams. It's complex, it's about 15 steps. And God almighty, you'd go insane if you had to do it all the time. And we do feel that there is a loss of confidence in particular into Trim, just through its sale to Microfocus and its development as an on-premises system, which doesn't actually align with our roadmap of the cloud. And so we are looking at a post-Trim world, and this is part of the start. So when we set up this proof of concept, we knew what we wanted to achieve. We had some products in place to, to achieve it. But we also wanted to have some success criteria. And it wasn't about just invisibility, because Lordy, we could do that really easily. But we actually wanted to, to satisfy certain requirements. And the requirements that we did when we went out to market for our solution was based upon standard 12, um, the standards on records management. So we wanted to have that auditability, we wanted to have that traceability, we wanted to be able to legally dispose of information. We also wanted our records manager to sign off on it and go, yeah, this is, a, this is approved. And this turned out to be really important because I didn't realise how many trim lovers there were in our organisation. People who just went, I've got to use my trim because that, then, then, the, then the records police won't cut me off. And if I can say, well, actually, our records management our records is fine with this, then that gave people comfort. And then it had to have my sign off. So it had to be simple to use, it had to align with the strategy. Um, and it had to be extensible and flexible enough for an organisation like our own, which is just in a constant state of flux. I don't need to tell you how complex government can be, but sometimes the complexity of this organisation <laughs> seems somewhat more complex than it needs to be. And an issue with that complexity is that we don't have our own Office 365 environment. We share it. And so we are tenants in that environment, and as tenants, we need to follow a code of behaviour and be good citizens. And so that means that some of the solutions that might be available to yourselves in smaller agencies, when you just go, I can just go into the Compliance Security Centre and find that information. I can't do that because I'm a good citizen. I don't need to know Treasury's information, and I shouldn't have access to that. 
So what is Record 365? So this is a product from Record Point. It doesn't lift cows into UFOs, but I use this image because what it enables you to do is to connect to a site or to a library or to a drive or to a system. And it does that using a micro connector. In our proof of concept, we were only connecting to Office 365. We did attempt to connect to a share drive, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But it enables you to, in a sense, whitelist and target what you wish to be analysed from a records management perspective and have that information sent to an application so that it starts to manage that information. So it's using Azure and microservices to understand and control information in other environments. And it can be used in things like Box, Dropbox, Share Drives, OneDrive, Exchange. They are working on connectors to Salesforce and other systems. And it's based around rules. Now, I'm going to show you a slide. It's going to have a moving picture. Don't worry about the moving picture. It was just the best picture I could find. Right. How does it work? It is a series of if-then statements. So if it sits within this library and it has the metadata property of procurement and that procurement property is over $80,000, then I understand that it has this retention class and must be kept for these many years. And when I, as a records manager, go into the module from the application, I can see that information that sits within SharePoints that meets those rules and I can run reports and understand how long information needs to be kept for, what's due for destruction, and it allows me to go on a process where I get the business approval for that to be then legally destroyed. It can target any metadata element that is contained within SharePoint. It will expose you to how good or bad your architecture or planning is, okay? Because the better the metadata is, the better quality outcomes you're going to get. So when we talked initially about, we just released this thing called groups, teams, and if somebody starts a group, we don't have actually any idea, aside from what is in our AD, where that group came from, who is the owner of that group, and what its intended purpose is. <coughs> and so that is, in itself is limiting. However, the good news is that SharePoint Office 365 has huge number of share of um, metadata elements and so you can do things cleverly it can also end up incredibly complex and I think the best description was from my colleague who said it's a little bit like having a deck of cards and you say to the rules engine is this the ace of spades and the rules engine said no and so you have to go to the next cards is this the ace of spades no and so writing those rules is an intellectual exercise and something that we learnt that you actually get better over time. And then, of course, they brought out machine learning and we stopped needing to do that anymore. So what did we discover? Um, a little bit more about the structure of this. We ran this over a number of SharePoint sites and a number of teams based on the SharePoint sites decided. It manages content within those SharePoint sites. It manages things like calendar items. It's not doing your conversations in teams yet. It's a bit limited in that regard. And then we got our users, our, our information management staff, to take on different roles. They had fun creating classes. One of them was uh, Ritual Disposal 666. Um, and then we then gave it our results assessment, ran it past our records manager, and he went, yeah, that's right. So what did we find? It was easy to set up. If any of you have gone down the on-prem route, it's really, really quite difficult. Um, this was literally two hours. And an hour and a half of that was trying to get Skype to work. Um, we had really good systems from the vendor, and that was really helpful. They're very keen to, it's a new product, um, so they're interested in feedback. Um, the dashboard for the records managers and for records officers was really clean, really easy to, to visualise. Um, and it allowed us, what Record Point does is capture the actual binary of the record, which is kind of like a dynamic copy. So the connector will go and investigate the data in SharePoint and it will go, you're that version. I'm going to take that version and I'm going to store it in my application. And it will also then go, you seem to have made a change to that version and got a new version. So I'm going to take that version and replace that one 
in my application. And that's really, really helpful and really useful because it's a little bit of a DR, it means that I have a, uh, a copy to, to review, but it's not an actual storage um, heavy type of product. Um, all the metadata associated with an item within SharePoint is captured. That's good, and I'm going to tell you why it's bad in a little bit. It allows for holds, so legal holds, and approval before disposal. So it's one of the things that um, Office 365 Microsoft products currently do not do uh, particularly well, is reducing that human element. It's really easy to import a file plan, just do it from an Excel spreadsheet, quite easy to create elements within that file plan. Um, and the rules engine allows for that granular retention. Again, determined, of course, by how much metadata you actually have within the system. So you can go, they are and or not um, yeah, search terms. So uh, you can actually get some very granular retention. What are we not like? As I showed you with the ability to make the rules, it can be massive. And when we're talking an organisation, you know, we're an organisation of about 7,000 people, but we've got about 5,000 different functions. It's not like, you know, I'm sorry, education, but it's not like education, which, you know, teaching lots and lots of schools. Um, we do so many different things from managing greyhounds and managing money. So we could see that actually developing a rules engine was going to be really complex and it was going to uh, end up in this massive sprawl. One of the things that we discovered was that uh, it had a records level disposal, um, but not at the container level. You could create reports, but it would want you to dispose of everything one by one. And I know that the organisation who make Records 365 are looking at that as a development because everybody just says, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's got time for that, man? Um, and the other part of it, when you send a message to an approver to go, come and approve your records, at the moment there is, I'm going to call it a bug because I'm feeling generous today, there is a bug that allows the approver to see all the records that are due for disruption and not just their own. And that is quite an issue. And in fact, sufficiently that I would say that it was broken. Um, it does capture items that may be irrelevant and of course this is a judgment call. So we were finding it was picking up all of our calendar entries, saying, when is I working from home? David is sick today. Those types of things are being treated as a record. And we're like, oh, we need to have a rule about uh, normal administrative practice. But for sometimes, if you were to go, I want that to run on the secretary's calendar, that could be a totes awesome thing. Um, there is no indication of move or copy. So I can move a document to another library and it's not going to say, this is being moved, all it's going to do is go, I've got the old binary of the one that was moved, so good good on me. And then it go to the, the new version and the new library, it'll go, here's a new record. And so there's no relationship between the two. There's limited audit events that are captured in the Records 365, so it captures all of the records type audit. The record is here, somebody's looked at it, those types of uh, audit. But you have to go to SharePoint if you want to look at the full metadata history. So it's being retained in two different places. Um, and there's limited ability to see the records in context. And so what I mean by that is that a lot of contextual information is held within the name of a site or in the name of a library or in the name of a channel. And when it's removed from that and removed from that context, you can no longer see its relationship to other records. It goes back to that containerization. And the last one was we tried to connect to our shared network drive, our security uh, configuration <coughs> said nah, and we went sure, because we did this in a very limited amount of time. We ran this proof of concept over six weeks, and we were going to go into a fight with security about how we could possibly make that change. So if I had more time, I would have done the fight, but not so much. <coughs> what was ugly? I don't think any of those are terribly showstoppers apart from the one bug. I think there are ways around doing and managing that. And one thing I will say about Records 365, and it's true also of SharePoint, it does what it does well, but it's not trim. And it's not going to do anything more than what it says on the box. Okay? So if you want a workflow, sure, run it through a Power App. It's going to collect all that metadata. It's going to show it to you. Is it going to show you every step-by-step um, step in a beautiful process? No, but you could write something 
in Power BI to make that happen. But the other things about Record 365 was in how it was presented. So you couldn't customise dash columns in the dashboards. You couldn't navigate through any of the aggregations. So I couldn't go, this record it appears to be sitting at library, so I want to go with one click into that library. I have to go to SharePoint to do that. Okay. There were duplicate events in the audit log. Again, I would consider this a bug. Um, and then it catches all the metadata elements. You will not believe the number of metadata elements that SharePoint will pre present to you. And there was no way to order them and there was no way to hide them. And so you were presented with a list of about maybe 500 fields that you were then could view and adapt at your leisure, but by the 20th year, a bit over it all. So these are feedback that I have given to Record Point. Maybe we might see a change in the future. But one thing I will say is that, as I said, it does what it does very well. But again, I'm going to go back to the word paradigm shift. It is a complete paradigm shift away from how an EDRMS works because its role in life is to go, I understand the information is in SharePoint. My understanding is that it contains these particular metadata fields and I can link that to a disposal authority. It's not there to manage the records itself. Okay? And that is quite a difficult challenge to make. And when we had BIEs on this project, they're going, I don't like it. Don't like it. I, 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 just, I just don't, don't get it. And it took about two weeks. Oh, oh, it's not like trim at all, is it? Oh, but it does, it does that thing. Yeah, it's actually, oh, this is really good. And it, it will really mess with your head initially, but once you've got it, you've got it. So we're moving into the next phase, and the next phase is machine learning. And this is a module that was brought out by Record Point as we were doing our proof of concept, and we thought, sweet, we're on this train. And that's our current project at the moment. And we're hoping that we'll overcome some of the hurdles that we have in terms of architecture. So what happens in machine learning is we go, here's a series of awesome documents that represent this particular business function. Now my bot, go in and have a look at that, learn what this is. I'm now going to release you on a series of other documents and you can come back to me and say, here's the good stuff. And I can go, right on, or no. Nah, but go back and learn some more. And eventually what it will do is it will be able to, you'll be able to understand what are going to be kept with records and link it to a rule, and you can then start releasing that on new content, on new sites, on new teams, and it will then allow you to, as possibly as I want to say after the last presentation, automatically categorise that information as records, but always with that human element. So always with the records manager going, yes, this is acceptable, or no, it's not acceptable. So we are currently in that process right now. I'd love to come back in a year's time and tell you how awesome it went and how we've been able to uh, change the way that we manage our records within Office 365 and then beyond. So our next steps are to do analysis of our proof of concept with machine learning, look at ways in which we may be able to roll this out um, to our department or what will be our department at that point in time. And we want to do this with the most limited intervention with our end users as we possibly can. And we believe that through machine learning, we can start training this information, particularly on things that are sitting within the general disposal authorities. And so that is the kind of thing that when people create a new site, we'll be automatically be able to capture. And I say that with great optimism because I am by nature an optimist, but I'm also a pragmatist as well. So that's been our journey, and I'd like any questions that you may have. So the question was, uh, do we still use a BCS? And this is an excellent question. And I would also challenge the, I've used a trim system which didn't have a BCS, so that was fun. Um, look, 
we think that VCS is really important and we would like to incorporate that, particularly when using machine learning, um, because it enables us to understand as much as we can about the context of that information. Um, however, the way that um, Records 365 is, they talk about file plan retention disposal. That's their driver because they are compliance tool. This is being sold around the world. Um, that's, that's their interest. So we will have to do something a little bit more cleverer to go as part of the rule that we create. Not only is it going to give it a retention class, but it'll also <coughs> align itself to an our existing VCS. So it does have that place, um, but it's not as, uh, how would I say, it's not off the shelf. Um, so how do we handle the approach to uh, record disposal constraints that's kind of very fine that we have to be applying at the document level? Um, and I'm not sure if you're handling that in a centralized centralized perspective or whether it's more involved in your organization. So the question was around disposal, how we manage disposal, and, and like all good records managers, we're just ignoring that one. Um, <laughs> what what we actually do intend to do is um, we're working with the, the vendor. We're working with the vendor to to try and make that an easier process, and we're also working with the vendor about security trimming so that we can. Um, have different teams within the organisation managing their disposal. So having our revenue team managing disposals for revenue, having our CRT team managing the records for CIRA. So that, that's our approach. But And of course, we're, this is all records. We actually blew away our whole tenant last week because we wanted to do something new. Um, and so they're all in test anyway. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good then. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much, Wendy. Um, round of applause again. So I think that's um, so I think that's that's really good, and and thank you for both of you to for spearheading, you know, something that is relatively new, you know, within government clusters, and especially with the looking at machine learning, you know, and there's limited opportunity, you know, I guess limited tools at our disposal to handle the volumes of things that are being created and meeting public expectation for search and all the rest of it. So I think it's um, it's a really promising stream of work. We should watch closely. Um, 